This is my biggest weakness in my squat right now, and it feels pretty terrible. It's my core. So watch this rep at 250 kilos, focusing specifically on my lower back and hips. You'll see a tremendous amount of hip movement from side to side. As much as this is visible to you, this feels like a huge amount to me. This 250 kilos is the second time in recent years where the movement to my lower back has been so much that I felt slightly concerned. The first time was near the end of my set of 240 kilos for 11, which is a reasonable time to experience some tactical breakdown. My concern here is twofold. The first is performance. My ability to not stiffen through the midline compromises two particular areas. First, my knee tracking isn't as precise. My more prone to knee valgus movement when my core isn't as strong, which results in a rearward shift of my hips, which then results in or exacerbates my upper back rounding which is a second area of performance I'm concerned about. My back's lack of capacity to maintain the upper back position is a two-way street. When the core is unstable, I can't maintain the upper back tightness, but when I don't maintain the upper back tightness, my core isn't going to be as stable. The second concern I have isn't a major one, but it's certainly worthy of note. The injury risk for such unstable and unpredictable movement in my lower back is definitely on the cards. Whatever your views on low tolerance are, regression to undesirable secondary positions that are sporadic and only present at heavy weights, this isn't a good training tactic for long-term progress under reasonably safe conditions. Now, I do use a belt on my heaviest sets and it certainly assists in core tightness, but it's not quite sufficient. The core isn't as strong as it should be, and the use of a belt with a stronger core would only result in a stronger squat. I'm all for the use of belts, but I don't want to band-aid the issue if I can reasonably improve it. For the last year, since squatting 300 kilos, I've been hammering my upper back twice a week, and it's certainly been paying off, while also working hard to increase my hamstring, glute, and thoracic mobility, both of which have increased the quality and comfortability of my squat. But problem areas will always arise, no matter how strong or well-trained you are, and this, this is my current battle. So how will I change up my core training? What super sophisticated exercise and loading will I bring out to address this? Well, I guess I'd Better start by doing any amount of core work. Currently, I do zero. Yeah, now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, and you guys have loads of core work in your programs. You're always saying you should definitely do some core work. Here, it's a case of do as I say and not as I do personally. So I'll start by doing any core training twice a week. The great thing about core work is that the core is as much a skill as it is strength building. When training the core, we're certainly adding some muscle mass, but we're also really improving our ability to contract and coordinate the muscles from about our hip up and rib cage down. This is the case for all exercises, but when we look at maybe the quad or the bicep, for example, you know, muscles that cross less complex joints, the skill involved in stability and movement isn't as high, but due to the nature of the core and the back being so complex, a lot of core work is a skill-based solution. Don't mistake this with mechanical demand, of course, the load on your quads and the squat is going to be exceedingly high compared to the core, but the movement is quite simple when we look at the knee. When we do core work, think about it like sports practice. We're practicing the stiffness and stability we need for heavier weights. So I'll start by doing things like side bends, weighted sit-ups, side planks and L-sits. Split across about two sessions per week. I will increase the load, volume and intensity as I progress, but just the simple nature of doing these will likely produce some gains. I will also try and increase the complexity of some of these exercises. So stay tuned for a more stable and more wonderfully fabulous back squat from me.